good afternoon to all of you in this lecture we have to continue with noise in pcm we have to consider noise in pcm <coughs> here at transmitter point of view actual signal m of t first of all it get sample actual signal which is a continuous signal m of t it is get sampled after sampling we will get the signal m of k t s now this sample signal is get quantized to a appropriate level so this will give the signal m of k t s cap this m of t continuous signal first of all it is get sampled this will give us the m of k t s this signal is get quantized now this signal is represented as m of k t s after this one corresponding to this sample value we are coding this sample value in a rectangular pulses so here this sample value is coded in n bits h per suppose here n is equal to 8 that means this particular sample value is transmitted over this transmitter by using 8 rectangular pulses this will shows 0 1 0 1 this is the sequence of digits that means we are sending over this channel that is 8 rectangular pulses for each sample here at transmitter point this will give the difference m of kts minus m of ts it is nothing but quantization error q of t mean square value or this quantization error that is your q is given as your mp square divided by 3l square in last lecture we have derived this quantity that is a average energy or this noise which is generated due to the quantization that is q square q square bar is equal to mp square peak amplitude divided by 3l square now this signal is transmitted over the channel at receiver at receiver these rectangular pulses are transmitted over channel at this point your signal is added with your noise which is known as n of t that is adaptive white gaussian noise adaptive white gaussian noise due to this noise this level 0 1 0 1 0 the strength of level is get shifted when this strength is below 0 then we can see that this signal is detected as 0 actually this transmitter transmitted 0 due to this noise n of t this level gets shifted now at receiver this 0 will read as a 1 this is the error this error is known as detection error this error is known as detection error and which is given as epsilon at this point your signal is reconstructed which is given as tilt m of tilt here be specific m of tilt kts so here basically we are having first signal m of t which is get sample m of kts which is get quantized m of kts cap here it is represented by n numbers that is n digit just we have considered n is equal to 8 so over this channel with respect to this sample value we are sending 8 pulses rectangular pulses 
over this channel channel noise is going to add on this pulses this noise is nothing but n of t at receiver side this noise will generate the detection error which is represented as a epsilon output of this receiver is nothing but m of k t s tilt so this epsilon detection noise it is a error in detection input to this receiver is nothing but m of k t s actually what is the input to receiver is it is nothing but a rectangular pulses which are corresponding to quantized value so definitely at output we will get this tilt value the difference between output of receiver to input of receiver cap is nothing but your epsilon <coughs> that is a detection error finally overall error in this system is due to error generated at transmitter which is given as quantization error error at receiver that is a detection error which is given as epsilon so whatever the error e of t total error in your pcm is nothing but summation of quantization error plus detection error epsilon of t in last lecture we have derived here the mean square value or mean square energy over this quantization error which is given as q square bar mp square divided by 3l square similarly in this lecture we have to derive this value that is epsilon square bar plus q square bar this will give us e square bar. overall error at output of a receiver so in this way this is nothing but your n0 noise power at output of receiver similarly we have to find out s0 so we will get s0 divided by n0 is nothing but your output signal to noise ratio in this lecture basically we have to derive this detection error so write down here m of t m of t is a wide sense stationary process m of t is a wide sense stationary process <coughs> then mk cap is nothing but quantized signal <coughs> mk tilt is nothing but reconstructed sample reconstructed sample q k and epsilon k <coughs> this q is nothing but quantization error and epsilon k is nothing but detection error this quantization error is given as your difference between mk minus mk tilt epsilon k is nothing but difference between mk cap minus mk tilt so total error that is difference between your actual signal mk minus mk tilt is equal to q quantization error plus epsilon error this is nothing but <coughs> total error total error that is output this is reconstructed output and this is the input that is mk minus mk tilt difference between actual signal sample signal minus reconstructed signal is equal to quantization error plus detection error 
Now write down by using interpolation formula. By using interpolation formula, m of t tilt is nothing but summation over k sink of 2 pi bt minus k <coughs> pi. This is nothing but k here mk minus Sink of 2 bt minus k pi. So, this is nothing but summation over k mk into sink of 2 pi bt <coughs> minus k pi minus summation over k sink of 2 pi bt minus k pi. <coughs> so, in this way we can write down this m cap tilt is equal to m of t minus e of t by using this reconstructed sample we have to reconstruct your signal m of t tilt that is equal to we have to consider these samples m k tilt which is get multiplied with your filter. This filter gives the linear approximation. It is, it is having the response that is the sink, sink of 2 by bt minus k pi. Here mk tilt it can be represented as mk minus q plus epsilon which is get multiplied sink of 2 pi bt minus k pi. Here mk multiplied with sink minus this quantization error plus detection error multiplied your sync function. So, we can see that reconstructed signal is nothing but m of t that is your original continuous signal minus e of t. e of t is nothing but error in your PCM system. This error due to your quantization noise and your detection noise. So, this e of t is equal to your q of t plus this epsilon of t. Write down E of t as a process is wide sense stationary. The mean square value of process is the same as the mean square value as the mean square value at any instant at any instant. So, here the mean square value or this error is equal to mean square value of quantization error plus mean square value of detection error. Mean square value of this quantization error which is given as which is given as mp square divided by 3l square. Now we have to find out the mean square value of detection error. So give a heading mean square value of detection error. In bracket probability of error PE. Here, write down let through the certain binary channel, let through the certain binary channel message, message m is equal to 0 
and 1 m is equal to 0 and 1 are transmitted with equal probability message m is equal to 0 and 1 are transmitted with equal probability using a positive and negative pulse using positive and negative pulse respectively <coughs> respectively for received pulse received pulse 1 received pulse 1 <coughs> it can be represented as p of t and received pulse 0 it can be represented as minus p of t minus p of t and this p of t This is a simple pulse with a height magnitude of AP and duration of TP. At transmitter side, see here, we are sending either 0 or 1. We are sending either 0 or 1. And receiver side, when we receive received 1, it can be represented as P of T. This pulse, P of T. When we received 0, then it represented as minus P of T. It's a reverse. Minus P of T. So here, when we consider this is your receiver, <coughs> here either we have to receive P of T or minus P of T. Noise is going to act on this pulse rectangular pulse or this pulse p of t due to this noise due to this noise suppose this p of t it will represent one due to this noise this level get shifted when noise level is higher this p of t it is transmitted as one but due to this noise this will be read as a zero so here this is the input p of t plus n of t so at this point we will get detection error at this point we will get detection error so here we have to consider this is a n of t is a channel noise this one is your channel noise which can be represented n of t by using its a PDF probability density function probability density function <coughs> and with zero mean and this will be given as one by root two pi sigma n e raised to minus what is this value e raised to minus n square divided by 2 into sigma square <coughs> with 0 mean this is with 0 mean These are the received signal. We are expecting this received signal. It will indicate that this is 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. <coughs> but due to this noise, so here one is received with, when one received, we will get for 1, 
this amplitude becomes ap for zero it becomes minus ap <coughs> this is regarding your signal which is unaffected by your noise when noise is going to affect on your signal this will be add plus n this one is plus n here we will get a correct detection for this one this signal level is, is get shifted minus ap plus n this one actually zero is transmitted actually zero is transmitted from your transmitter this level it should show this level as minus ap this noise is going to add in your received signal which is a zero this noise is going to add plus n this level is get shifted but still it is below the zero so your system is correctly sense this minus ap plus n which is less than zero as a zero so we can see that this is a correct detection for this signal where one is transmitted from your transmitter this level should be plus ap this noise is going to add which is a awg and due to this noise this level get shifted below this ap plus n as it is greater than zero this is a above this reference zero so we read this as a one so this is a correct detection now for this one ap plus a minus ap plus n actually your transmitter sends the zero ideally this value should be minus ap this noise is going to add in your system add in your pulse which is minus ap this level get shifted noise level is larger so this minus ap becomes greater than zero so we are getting error zero is transmitted but your system receiver read this zero as a one read this zero as a one so this is a detection error are you got it yes or no when zero is transmitted minus ap we are adding plus n as we are adding plus n this level get shifted up when we cross this reference level this will be read as a one now this is called as a error this error is occur due to the channel noise this channel noise is nothing but n of t this channel noise is nothing but n of t which is a adaptive white gaussian noise now we have to plot this condition here this is nothing but a probability density function for your noise which is a zero mean gaussian noise zero mean gaussian noise so for this noise which is given as p of n this is probability density function for this noise which is given as 1 by 2 pi into sigma n e raised to minus n square divided by 2 sigma square now we have to find out the area <coughs> yes how to find out this area between alpha and beta what is the procedure to find out this area between alpha and beta as please give the attention this is a very important part here this is the probability density function for your noise with a zero mean which can be given as 1 by sigma n root 2 pi into e raised to minus n square divided by 2 sigma n can you give me the probability for n which is less than or equal to 0 what is the probability of n which is less than or equal to 0 0.5 is it 0.5 so probability 
for n ranging between minus infinity to plus infinity? What is the probability for n ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity? 1. Similarly here we have to find out the probability probability where n is ranging between alpha to beta here we will get probability for n which is ranging between alpha and beta that is equal to 1 by sigma root 2 pi integration over alpha to beta of e raised to n square divided by 2 sigma n square dn. Is it correct? Now we have to find out the probability of error. We have to find out the probability of error. So write down 0 is transmitted when 0 is transmitted from your transmitter, sample value of received pulse, 0 is transmitted from your transmitter, then sample value of received pulse is nothing but minus AP, when 0 is transmitted, sample value of received pulse, your receiver will read this as a minus AP, but this noise is going to add, that is plus N. <coughs> plus n. Here, if n is greater than AP, if n is greater than AP, for this condition, if n is greater than AP, then what happens? sample value becomes positive. <coughs> this sample value becomes positive. So, this is a digit detected wrongly as 1. So, here write down sample value sample value becomes becomes positive and digit detected as a 1. <coughs> this digit detected as a 1. So, yeah, we are transmitted 0. Ideally, we, we should receive minus AP. This noise is going to add. So, when this noise level is greater than AP, then we will get an error in your received signal. So, this 0 will read as a 1. This error is happen at the condition when n is greater than AP. Can you plot here? Suppose this is your AP. Assume that this is your AP. When n is greater than AP, So, can I say that? Say that this is the region where we will get an error. Yes or no? So, here we can say that probability of getting error epsilon provided 0 is already transmitted. Are you get it? We are finding the error in this probability density function of your noise, we have to assume that this is AP, peak amplitude of your rectangular pulse, which is the input to your receiver. Here, we have to receive, when 0 is transmitted, ideal level, it should be minus AP. Noise is going to add, 
this level becomes minus AP plus N. When N value is greater than AP, we will get an error in your signal. So this 0 will read as a 1. So we can see that this level minus AP plus N, it is greater than 0. Is it correct? This level becomes above the reference 0 level. So this 0 will read as a 1. Now this is an error. So here from AP, this N is greater than AP. So probability of getting error when 0 is already transmitted, which is given by 1 by sigma N root 2 pi integration or AP, N is ranging from AP to infinity, AP to infinity e raised to minus N square divided by 2 sigma N square dA. Is it clear? Similarly, when 1 is transmitted, when 1 is transmitted, sample value level is AP plus N. It should be above the reference level. Now, noise is going to add in your system. This level becomes slower down. Up to this 0, now this level becomes above this reference level, 0. Now here we can see that n, for this case, if n is less than this minus AP, when n is less than minus AP, then we will get sample value becomes negative and we will get an error in 1. Digit will be read as a 0. Now this is error. Now we are finding the probability of error. Similarly here, probability of getting error when 1 is already transmitted. This is conditional probability. This is conditional probability which is given as 1 by sigma n root 2 pi integration form. Now here, n is less than minus AP, this area. <coughs> this area. When we are ranging from minus AP to minus infinity, this will give the probability of error. Probability of error when one is already transmitted, integration over minus AP to minus infinity e raised to minus n square divided by 2 sigma n square dn. We are having one q function to represent these probabilities. Here, we have to consider that this 0 and 1, they are transmitted with equal probability. I am sending either 0 or 1. These are equivalent to your tossing a coin. Either head or tail, they are occur with equal probability. At transmitter point of view, we are sending either 0 or 1 with equal probability. Then we will get this structure as a symmetric. Exactly this AP and this one, they are symmetric to each other. For this approximation, for this condition, we can see that probability getting a probability of getting error when 0 is transmitted and probability of getting error when one is transmitted, they are equal. These probabilities are equal. Now for this derivation, these two equations, we have to represent by using your Q function which is given as Q of Y. <coughs> that is equal to 1 by root 2 pi integration over Y is ranging y to infinity e raised to minus x square divided by 2 dx. Here we can say that q of ap by sigma n is equal to 1 by root 2 pi integration over ap by sigma n up to infinity e raised to minus x square by 2 dx where y is equal to 
AP by sigma n. So these probabilities they are given by probability of epsilon when zero is transmitted it is given by Q of AP divided by sigma n. This will be given as Q of AP divided by sigma n. This is called as a probability of error. Probability of error is given as Q of AP divided by sigma n. <coughs> probability of error when 1 is transmitted or when 0 is transmitted which is given as Q function Q of AP divided by sigma. This Q function is mainly depends on these values AP by sigma n. Here sigma is, is nothing but the standard deviation or the variance of this curve which is a Gaussian shape and AP is nothing but peak amplitude. As we increase the peak amplitude we will get a probability error becomes smaller. As we increase the peak amplitude probability of error becomes smaller. Now we have to define this probability of error. It's a mean square value. So for this case, write down, we have to consider L is equal to 16. For L is equal to 16, that means we are dividing your message signal in L levels. That is equal to 2 raised to N. That is equal to 2 raised to 4. So n is equal to 4, we have to represent each samples by using 4 bits. Here transmitted code, we have to read this transmitted code as 1101. This value becomes 13. So here detection error in first digit. When will we get a detection error in first digit? So this is 0, 1, 0, 1. This will give the error, this error epsilon becomes 8. Here this value becomes 5. Actual we are, we want to send this 13, but we are getting error here, first bit, it becomes 0. So error, this 13 minus 5, so epsilon is equal to 8. When we will get a error in your second digit, this epsilon, becomes 4 in third digit this epsilon becomes 2 and in last digit <coughs> epsilon is equal to 1. So here this epsilon value from this one this epsilon is given as 2 raised to minus i into 60 i is equal to 1, first digit, 2 raised to minus 1, this will be epsilon, 1 is equal to 8, this is a true for all the cases. Now from this one we can see that epsilon i is equal to 2 raised to minus i into f, here f is nothing but full scale, minus mp to plus mp. So here this epsilon i is given as minus 2i into 2mp, where i is ranging from 1, 2, 3 up to n. So for this one we have to find out the mean square value. So epsilon square bar that is equal to summation over i is equal to 1 to n, epsilon i square probability of epsilon i. So here probability of error that is equal to i is equal to 1 to n epsilon i square probability error into 4 mp square into summation of i is equal to n to n 2 raised to minus 2i. Is it clear? So mean square value over this one, it is given as summation. We have to find out the area under this one. It is get multiplied with a value of your epsilon. 
multiplied it's a occurrence of probability expected value of x square is given as summation over xi into probability of xi here we have to find out the mean square value of epsilon that is given as epsilon value with its occurrence of probability for first first digit what is the error this error is given as 8 and its probability here one is already transmitted but we are getting an error what is the occurrence of this probability this probability is nothing but probability of error which is equal to q of ap divided by sigma n now in this one probability of error into 4 mp square into summation over i is equal to 1 to n 2 raised to minus 2 y this is this summation it can be represented as it's a geometric series write down it is with a common ratio r is equal to 2 raised to minus 2 here it is having the common ratio 2 raised to minus 2 first term a1 is equal to 2 raised to minus 2 and last term a n that is equal to 2 raised to minus 2n so this is given as probability of error 4 mp square in bracket 2 raised to minus 2 2 raised to minus 2 n minus 2 raised to 2 divided by 2 raised to <coughs> minus 2 minus 1 so this will be given as 4 mp square into probability of e here 2 raised to 2 n minus 1 divided by 3 into 2 raised to 2 n so probability of error epsilon square bar is equal to 4 mp square into probability of error in bracket l square minus 1 divided by 3 into l square 3 into l square is it clear in this term we have to divide this one 2 raised to minus 2 into 2 raised to minus 2 n this will give divide same term with numerator and denominator this will give 4 mp square into probability of error into 2 raised to 2 n minus 1 divided by 3 into 2 raised to 2 n so this can be represented as 4 mp square into probability of error into l square minus 1 plus 3 l square now for e square bar total probability of error this is the Quantization error, this can be given as mp square divided by 3l square. This is the error due to quantization noise, q, q square bar plus detection error that is 4 mp square into probability of error divided by l square minus 1 divided by 3l square. So in this way, we will get total error that is equal to mp square divided by 3 into 2 raised to n in bracket 1 plus 4 into probability of e 2 raised to n minus 1 and finally for signal to noise ratio this will be given as <coughs> now this is the total error output signal is m of t it's a mean square value is given as m square bar expected value of m square one output signal to noise ratio is given as 3 into l square 
L square is nothing but 2 raised to 2n divided by 1 plus 4 into probability of error in bracket L square minus 1. So output signal to noise ratio is related with number of bits and it is related with L level. Your message signal is divided into how much levels. Now this sample value is coded by using how many bits. Finally, it will depends upon your mean square energy of your message signal. So when we represent, when we increase N value, then what happen? See here the relation output signal to noise ratio is directly proportional to this 2 raised to 2 N. When we increase this number of bits, definitely signal to noise ratio becomes higher. The signal to noise ratio becomes higher. Then when we increase the signal power, average energy or the masses signal, then your signal to noise ratio becomes higher. And this digital communication or PCM, it is a solution for the analog or angle modulation. In angle modulation, as we increase the bandwidth, we will get a better output signal to noise ratio. But this threshold value is shifted. This is the problem in your angle modulation system. This problem will be solved in your PCM. In next lecture, we have to see how this problem will be solved.